So what's up guys? Ruben Lenton here with my big cuss, big calf. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't think many people actually know that we're cousins because uh, competition kind of drove us apart. But now uh, having yeah, a little bit uh, older age and uh, both having a, a lovely family, I think uh, our energy is connecting uh, on a much nicer level. And uh, I think it's time to uh, dive a little bit deeper into the mind of this uh, super athlete. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here, brother. Yeah, man, it's good to be here. Yeah. It's, uh, it's epic. Where are we? Where are we? We are uh, still in South Africa, one of the best places in the world to kite. And uh, you know, I think we've both been coming here since we were. I was here for the first time when I was 15, so 20 years ago. Yeah. I think you pretty similar, right? Yeah, same. I came here the first time in 2004 winter. Yeah. yeah, staying with the uh, Dolphin Beach with Greg Tyser also uh, yeah. competed on the world tour. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah, it's always been coming back ever since, right? It is. Uh, it is good. I remember those days. Nice. Competing for the freestyle tour, Woo. you know, riding in Big Bay most of the time, and then whenever it got too strong, no one kited. <laughs> I remember those yeah, days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like when it was above 30 knots, no one would kite. You can't unhook. Especially yeah. in the sea kites. I yeah. mean, the big air kites to so unhook now is uh, even even heavier, more power. Yeah. So I'm glad we do, we're not in that space yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've moved on. We can stay hooked in now, so it's good. Love it. But um, yeah, we spent countless hours on the beach. I think especially you. You were always on the beach uh, as long as I can remember since you were a little kid. You started out kiting at our home spot. When, when was the first time you flew a kite? I was seven, seven years old. Yeah. I still lived in the Caribbean when I was seven. And I started flying kites there and uh, I just got obsessed by kiting. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm still obsessed by kiting. That's why we're here. <laughs> exactly. Never, never stops, never stops. What a lifestyle, man. Yeah. It's uh, so good. And uh, yeah, we both became quite fluent in it. And uh, I think yeah, we learned a lot from each other over the years from yeah, growing up flying those power kites. I remember being small kids driving those beach buggies, like <laughs> some of our favorite. Endlessly. Kites. I remember those winters, you know, we're in Holland and, and it was the wetsuits weren't too good yet. And we would just, but, but we wanted to kite, you know, and uh, so we couldn't go on the water, but we'd just fly kites on the beach and we'd watch all these movies the whole winter and, and we could just visualize all these tricks and we're practicing them on the beach and coming up with new tricks. And then when the summertime would hit, we'd go uh, out on the water. And, and I think, you know, having the combination with you there and a bunch of other guys, your brother, Sander, my sister, and then Yoppie. some other <laughs> some other guys, uh, influential guys in, in Noordwijk. You know, it was a good mix of, of different characters, but I think everyone wanted to be good at something, and, uh, and that was kiting. And I think that's why, you know, we all became what we are today. Exactly. I mean, it's been such an incredible journey of progression and just, uh, I think, playfulness. I think you also were mentioning uh, Jordi and Mathieu, yeah. uh, like the older guys that we were looking up to. But we were always just on the beach, messing around with any type of wind, any type of kite. And yeah, it's just always been so inspiring and so fun to be around. And yeah, we're still around it now. So. <laughs> I still love it. That, that's the whole, you know, the whole thing for me. Like, I've, I've just been chasing the fun stuff, you know, like... Uh, from standing on the beach when I was like 11 years old and then uh, now, you know, being 30, oh, fuck, are we 30? Oh, it's your birthday soon, no? In two yeah, weeks, 30th, 30th, 30th of March. March Dude, he's a couple months older than I am. 36, three months, I he's got you. <laughs> <laughs> gonna say, keep, uh, keep me informed how it is when, when you're 36. Yeah, fuck, man. They created style later. That was a couple months too early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, no, but that fun ex aspect is, is uh, one of my main drivers of, of what I'm doing. You know, I love, that's why I started reading also just because I love kiting. I want to be involved with kiting as, as long as I can. And, you know, when I would read in, you know, I can hopefully for the next 35 years, I will be able to be involved into kiting. That's definitely my goal. I have no doubt, man. You guys yeah. are doing so phenomenally <laughs> well. And it's been so inspiring to see you transition. I mean, you, you've been a competitor, like a, a fierce competitor, like from within, right? So yeah. In the early days already, like so driven on training and competing and like what, what were those vibes in competing for you? Like what, what drives you in there? Really winning? Or? Yeah, winning. Winning is in my DNA. I, I just, uh, <clears throat> it, it becomes annoying sometimes in day-to-day -day stuff because I make, you know, competitions out of everything. I remember, you know, with Yalu, my sister, we used to cycle back from the beach and I would make a competition be like, oh, who's the first one at home, you know? Like all these little things, but I think, you know, that added also up into, you know, setting certain goals for myself and just putting my head down and, and just working as hard as I could towards those goals, you know, and eventually becoming, um, 
you know, world champion and multiple times king of the air winner. And, and now I use that same mentality in, in building a company. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot of similarities between being an athlete and, and um, running a company. You know, as an athlete, you lose a lot and you go, it goes like this, your career. You know, you have really high peaks and low lows and, and you try to manage as good as you can. Running a company is slightly different, but there's, it, you know, running a company doesn't always go smooth. You know, sometimes you you fall down and you got to get back up. But, you know, as I think as long as you keep going towards your 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 end goal, then uh, then uh, then, you know, having that that competitiveness in you is definitely going to help. Yeah, I mean, well, it's definitely inspiring and it's been annoying at some times <laughs> when, when surfing, like at our home spot, like I was trying to surf a few times a year and he was like just good and everything. And uh, you were always in the right spot in the in the water. Like the, the wave would always break where the fuck you were. It's like, ow, oh, you know. Yeah, you, you yeah. seem to be always in the right right place, and it's so beautiful to see. And uh, now with Reed, and like, how did the dream actually, uh, yeah, pop up? Well, yeah, Damien and I had the idea for many years before we started already. But you know, as you probably know, there's tons of ideas. But actually, making that next step in executing that idea is definitely something very different. And especially, you know, you can do a few steps towards executing it and then you might pull back because you see like, oh, you know, it might not work or, you know, it's maybe too expensive to start it. But then, you know, the, the idea of reading just kept coming back at us. And Damien and I started talking and talking and talking and talking. And eventually we had the whole idea planned out in our heads and we're like, okay, it's gonna work. But then we did the whole financial part, you know, because the idea can be good, but maybe the financial, uh, Thing doesn't work so we sat behind an excel sheet for like five days straight which i've never done in my life we had a big computer screen and we just made like best case scenario worst case scenario medium kind of scenario with all these variables in it and every time we made it and we put numbers on it the end result was positive yeah. and we were like okay yeah. you know our idea also looks like on in in, in you know cash flow wise and money wise it's it's going to work it's going to be a healthy business and uh, that's when we uh, decided to uh, give it a go. That's and, uh, beautiful, man. Here we are, four years later. Yeah, that's incredible. And I absolutely love the, the way you guys entered into the market. I mean, your cap vlogs were uh, highly watched and still, and uh, they're amazing. So the marketing is flowing so fluently and the, the way you named the products. And it's just been looking good from the start, you know. And Thanks, man. And your loyal fans have been backing you from the start. Yeah, it's yeah. Been amazing that helps. And it's cool now, you know, being in the position you are in now to be able to ride Whatever, your cut. Whatever, dude. Yeah, that's, uh, that was quite a special moment, you know, especially, you know, the history we went, you know, you did a complete different career path. As, well, we did the same, but you did it in a different way than I did it. Yep. And, you know, we still. definitely, yeah, we still, <laughs> and we definitely at some point moved apart from each other. And now, like you said before, we're sort of coming closer, which is uh, very enjoyable. And then, you know, being out together on the water, you know, riding reading products is, uh, is definitely, uh, yeah, a special, special moment. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, it feels so good. I mean, uh, touching the reading gear, like everything is just right, you know? Like the bar feels great, the auto swivel, oh, thank God for that thing. <laughs> I think my wrist has been messed up from my previous bar. And yeah. Like, this one is like, boop, boop. Boop. Yeah, man, it's uh, it's incredible. So riding in Hermanus was uh, was good. And uh, yeah, what is that? Enjoyed it. The, the gear strategy, because you are like one of the only companies that have very small range, right? Yeah. So the supermodel does it all. Yes, exactly. Well, we first of all, we didn't want to be one of the other kite companies, you know? We wanted to do something unique. We wanted to do something that, um, you know, differentiates us from all the other brands. And to be honest, just if looking at some of the other brands, they have so many kites, you know? They might have like eight or nine different type of kites. And then within those type of kites, they also have different categories. And to me, it, it just becomes, yeah, it, it becomes overwhelming. Yeah. And if I put my sh myself in the shoes of a customer, I would say 95% of the kiter kites on a twin tip, a wave board, and a foil. You never you know? bought a kite in your life, man. No, but I can, <laughs> I have some imagination, you know? And uh, so we, we thought like, you know, we truly believe if you make a really good kite, it's good for all those disciplines. If your kite turns fast, it works great for wave riding. It works great for kite loops. It works great for jumping. It works great for foiling. Um, if you can manage your deep power really well, it works on 
you know, for everything, every discipline again. So, you know, Damien started designing and designing and designing and then, because that's, that's sort of the idea we had, you know, we wanted to make that supermodel, you know, the supermodel does it, kite. And then I remember the first time Damien sent me the sample, I was like, wow, dude, that, you know, this is amazing. This is exactly what we talked about, you know, in a kite. And that's the beauty with, you know, working with a, with a guy like Damien. He's really good at translating what we want to achieve in a kite and then translating that in a kite. Like the feeling and the performance. And exactly. What you want to get and, uh, and then, you know, once you get into that um, field, your, your mind just starts exploding because you're like, oh, fuck, all these ideas all of a sudden, you know, we can do. There's no one holding us back. And, and that just, uh, yeah, that fuels our creativity and inspiration and, and motivation to, you know, keep making uh, better products. Yeah, well, it works. And now you are adding uh, a few products, actually. Yes. I already got a little bit confused, so please update me of the latest. <laughs> well, hopefully not too much. No, like, no. it's still very simple. So we have the Supermodel. Last year we launched the Supermodel HDF, which stands for Hybrid Torsion Frame. Um, so what it basically means is that we have, we use traditional Dacron, and then we use uh, flex light material in the wingtips, making it able to have the kite spin or twist quicker which makes the kite quicker and more responsive and, and overall, you know, feel lighter. And um, then in September, we launched the Hypermodel. It's basically the DNA of the Supermodel, but then hypercharged with Alula. And as most of you guys know, you know, you've known Alula. It's been around, it's, it's you know, quite an amazing material. It's really light, really stiff. And the beauty with the lightness and the stiffness is that you can make your leading edge thinner and your overall profile of the kite, you can make that thinner, which, um, you know, creates less drag into the air. And if there's less drag, your kite is quicker, the material is lighter, so the kites are almost 20, 25% lighter, mm -hmm. which is quite a lot on a kite. And, um, it, you know, that, that kite, as you know, it performs like, you know, like crazy, crazy good. Like, way beyond uh, I think what would, would have been possible. Yeah, and, and a lighter kite, like from my feeling, it also gets pushed away by the wind easier or something. And I feel that the Alula is a little bit slippery. And is it as durable as the other stuff? Or um, It's think? definitely more, the, the Alula material is definitely more fragile. Uh -huh. I, I like to compare it with like an aluminium bike and a carbon bike. You know, an aluminium bike, you can kind of chuck around and it's, if there's a ding in it, it's fine. With a carbon bike, you have to be a little bit more uh, careful. But, you know, the amount of performance you're getting out of the Alula material is just, you know, it's amazing. It's, 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 it, it's just this, like, extra. And it's the same if you ride, you know, if you've always been riding an aluminium bike, it's a fucking great bike. But then you jump on a carbon bike and you're like, okay, wait a minute, you know, this is, <laughs> this is something different. And that's the same with the Alula material. And um, so there's two guys, the Supermodel HDF. Yes. And the Hypermodel. Yes. As easy as that. As easy as it is. I think that makes such a big difference because it, yeah, a lot of times in the shop people are like, ah, they cannot choose like which yeah. discipline do I like? What I, I like it all, you know. Yeah. Some big air, I want to do some downwinders, and it makes it so easy. To yeah, choose. it's it's super easy to choose, and 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 you know we we just try to make the best guide out there, so you don't have to sacrifice on, on any performance or anything. You know, if if you buy a supermodel or you buy the hypermodel, you know that that thing is. You know, the best out there, yeah. And uh, and it's going to give you that confidence once you're in the air. It's going to give you that confidence on that wave. And uh, it's just a very yeah, easy and, and, and comfortable kite to ride that, that, you know, really helps you progress. Nice. And it goes on the Dreamstick bar. Uh, how long of a line do you guys normally go? Um, yeah, we do 22 meters and then okay. we add two meter extensions. Um, you know, I personally always ride 24. That's something I, I prefer. Uh, we have a bunch of team riders and clients that like to ride 22. They're very easy to disconnect and 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 put them uh, move the pigtails down to uh, 22 meters. Uh, you can even fold the lines once and make it 12 meter lines if you ever want to do those crazy kite loops. Or uh, I know you have heard yeah. that you do do some kite loops. Fold my lines, please. Yeah, <laughs> fold my lines. And that's the beauty, you know, with that with the Dreamstick uh, X. It's 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 a really easy bar to use. It has all these extra functions on it that that gives you, uh, you know, all the possibilities to, to ride it the way you like to ride it. And there's a 
you can pull it out and then make it like wider and smaller. Yeah. There's like two two sizes, two widths on there. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's adjustable uh, bar ends that you can you can move closer to each other to give a little um, heavier bar feel, mm -hmm. or move it to the outside to give it a little lighter bar feel. What do you um, for sizes? Like when when do you put it on the bigger size? Uh, to be honest, I always keep it the same. I know some people like to mess around a little mm -hmm. bit and try stuff out. I just always keep it on the outside. Yeah. That's what I prefer. Yeah. Um, more leverage it steers quicker, yeah it steers like quicker that, it right. gives you a little lighter bar feel right. but you know if you do have a dream stick definitely mess around with it and, and and feel what 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 you like the most and why are there still then the settings on the trailing edge like if you make the perfect guy that does it all like there's still you can move uh, close to the trailing edge are there two or three there's three yeah for the bar edge. pressure there's three options so we deliver the kite in the middle section uh, or in the middle on the middle knot so having like a medium bar pressure we know from experience that some guys, you know, just like a lighter, even lighter bar pressure. So it gives you that option. Yeah. Some guys like a little heavier bar pressure and also has that option. Or it makes the, like if you have a seven meter or a small kite, for example, you can put it on the inside. So it's like steers a little bit less fast. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it does give you, it, it doesn't go less fast. Okay. It, it just, uh, you have to put a little bit more yeah. bar input, yeah, exactly. input to get the kite going, yeah. which feels like the kite is yeah, yeah, exactly. slower, you know, but it, it's not actually slower. Because all the brands, they deliver it on that middle setting. And yeah. I always used to make it to the lighter setting, so it's just faster and, I don't know, just easier. But then, yeah. now I've been trying a few kites and on my edge, it yeah made some other difference. But on various kites, it makes such a huge difference and like such a, so it's definitely recommended to try out people. Definitely play around with those settings, see what you like and uh, yeah, get yeah, well, your gear. Yeah, exactly. But we try to, you know, deliver the gear that you know, we believe is the right setting. Yep. That's how the kite has been delivered. That's yep. how the bar is set up. That's how the kites are set up. So from the back, you can just basically pump your kite, attach your lines and go, and, and you're 100% guaranteed that the settings is everything is good. Yep. But I you noticed. know, yeah, <laughs> which makes it uh, life very easy. But you know, there's people that, you know, like to eventually, you know, try their, their, their little things and those options we uh, do have. Yeah, beautiful, man. Uh, and design wise, I mean, where do you guys get your inspiration from? Because from the first time, like the kites stand out out of all of them, you know, you can spot a reading kite from miles away. I think that's so well done. Who does the graphics? Is that Damien? Uh, Damien, yeah, yeah. That guy is just a mad, mad professor, you know, the uh, the amount of inspiration that guy has. And, and sometimes he brainstorms ideas with me and I'm like, Dude, I, like, I don't get it yet, you know? And then I let it sink for a day and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, he's like five steps ahead already. And uh, that's why I love working with him, you know, he's definitely uh, sort of the mad professor that, <laughs> that comes, out, uh, comes up with innovative, cool ideas. And uh, no, I think, you know, we, we, the, the Reden logo is very recognizable. Uh, we, we make sure that, you know, that, that is very visible on, on all our products. Um, that, you know, if you see a thousand kites in the sky, you can, like you say, you can just pick, yeah. pick the Reden kite out of there. And uh, yeah, Damien does that. He's really good at it, he, you know, he designs the products and then sort of naturally uh, he does the, like the technical design and then the visual design, he, like that almost comes together. Yeah. Um, and and uh, yeah, he's been doing some uh, amazing work. 100%. And yeah. then you're adding some boards in there as well. Uh, yeah. Because I wrote the Kev Pro and I wrote the Space Agency. Yeah. Amazing boards. Uh, I prefer the Space Agency. Uh, you ride the Kev Pro, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we make a Ruben amateur board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got a big E for you. Oh, no, nice. beginner <laughs> yeah. board. Perfect. Yeah. Get me planing. Yeah, exactly. Can you pick me up downwind? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, you know, I think with our with our boards, the same same kind of philosophy. You know, we want to keep, we want to make the best products out there, uh, with the best manufacturers out there, using the best materials out there, and and using the best people in the industry to. Um, you know, to get the best boards there. And uh, I think, you know, board wise, twin tip wise, we're, you know, top notch. The quality is amazing. We produce our products in, in uh, Poland, which is great. Uh, because you speak fluent Polish. Yeah, yeah. because I speak uh, fluent Polish. Polish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm just really happy with, you know, every time I ride those, those boards, it's just, it feels very light on your feet. It feels very comfortable through chop and flat water and it's, it's just, uh, you can ride up the beach and you know, the, the, those things are they're super like strong. That. Yeah, I like that too. <laughs> so I'm the, very, tell um, me quickly the difference. With, so you have the Super E, which is a beginner board? No, or? it's not necessarily a beginner okay. board. No, the, so we have actually three um, uh, types of boards. So we have the, the Super E, yeah. which is basically for 
the normal rider that rides at normal speeds. Full wooden core, um, really nice outline, good rocker line. Then the Kev Pro has the same outline, same rocker line, but we've added carbon to it. And the beauty with carbon is that the reflex is, is faster. So it feels, it feels stiffer, it's not necessarily stiffer, but the reflex is faster, which, you know, if, if you ride more high performance and you want to get more performance out of your board, then the Kev Pro is definitely your board to get. And then, you know, we went uh, on the space agency, we went completely nuts on the design. We didn't look at the price tag. We were like, okay, fuck it, let's see what we can do. So we reduced weight uh, where we could. Uh, we did a new rocker line, a new outline. Uh, we're using three types of different carbon, full uh, carbon top, full uh, carbon uh, bottom. And it just gives you that out of space feeling, you know, it's like, it's just magic. Um, it, but it's a full carbon board. It's a full carbon board, yeah. Wow, yeah. And, uh, and it, you know, as you, as you know, it's, it feels very light on your feet. It feels very crispy. And uh, yeah, I, lo I love that thing. Yeah, I think it's the best board I've ever ridden, for oh, sure. Oh, that's a yeah. good, that's <laughs> a good claim. Do you hear that, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> really? if that I mean, guy I'm a says it? Biased, <laughs> we're family, but hey. <laughs> no, really, really, really nice. Um, yeah, thanks so much for all this intel and uh, yeah. producing this epic gear. Um, how do you balance now your life with the family, uh, with the business and uh, being a super athlete because you're yeah. one of the most fit guys out there. <laughs> going to the Spartan X, winning a competition there, kills everyone at CrossFit. How do you do it, bro? Yeah, that's a good question. I ask myself that sometimes as well. It's definitely a little bit more challenging than um, before where I was just competing and just doing being an athlete. Now I'm the athlete, I run you know, a company and then I have my family and, and you know, running a family is uh, definitely not a walk in the park, uh, but it's cool, you know, the, the kids definitely give you a lot, a lot back. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, later, hopefully later, <laughs> so, sometime, I'm still waiting for it, dude. That's, that's my guess. Um, no, but I, I think I just do what I love to do and then it kind of comes naturally. Um, I struggle sometimes to balance it all out, but I think that's normal. Uh, but you know, I love still being an athlete and being out there in the elements and like, you know, you know, that never, that never really goes away. And then r running the company, going into like a different chapter and, you know, using my knowledge that I've gained from my career and putting it into a company and working with amazing people and building a team and, and, you know, building that company really is something I really love doing. Yeah, looks and like then, it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I only do things I love doing, you know. And I, I truly believe if you follow that path, it you become good at it, anyways, because then it never feels like work. And uh, looks good on you, man. So I, yeah, I just keep doing what I love doing, and I love doing going to the CrossFit, and I try to become the best at it, even though it doesn't matter. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. But I make even with that fucking things, man. It makes me. I just still keep doing competitions. Like I'm in there in the cross, and I'm like, okay, the, this and this is the workout. And look at everyone. I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna beat you guys. And I'm like, why? Why would? <laughs> like out, it doesn't man. fucking matter if you're last or second or whatever. But then the, it's just in me, you know. No, but it's healthy to pick and your own uh, challenge before life throws them at you. Yeah, 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 exactly. And uh, challenge make you uh, stronger, man. Yeah. So and, uh, what's your next challenge, or what's your biggest challenge right now? Uh, I want to just keep growing the company. That's, that's, uh, but uh, first of all, I want to keep enjoying what I'm doing. That's to me the most important. You know, if I feel like I'm not enjoying something, I'm just going to stop with it. But, you know, still, you know, making the cat vlogs, you know, riding with you. And, you know, the other day we went to Hermanus, you know, riding with all the, the Nordvac crew. Yeah. Ah, man, that was fucking amazing. You know, we all nice. grew up together and that was just this this magic vibe there on that beach, you know, that maybe no one else really got, but you know, I could feel it. I'm yeah, sure yeah, everyone 100%. could feel it. And, <laughs> and hopefully that translates a little bit in the footage you're seeing, but I think, uh, yeah, yeah th those, those moments, uh, that's what you live for, right? Well, that's what I live for. And uh, I, lo I love it. Yeah, yeah, let's check a little bit of this Hermana session before uh, we bore you to death. And then uh, we'll <laughs> yeah. close it off you know, with some uh, more interesting questions. Oh. Hello! Welcome to this epic day. Not many people know that we're cousins. <laughs> Did you, uh... Are you in? Slings, slings! Oh, man, that's dangerous. Hey! <laughs> 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 
Cheers, cheers, guys. So you've been a Grom, I've been a Grom, and uh, now you've got a lot of Groms <laughs> under you. Uh, yeah. What's, uh, what's the deal with the, the Reading Grom team? Um, well, that project basically started, you know, pure out of passion. You know, like when we started, there wasn't, there wasn't really something there that could help us. I think yeah, what you had the Cool Skin team which kind of helped you, you know, Steph de Jong. Feel the shave cool, yeah. man, 14 years old, <laughs> yeah. my shaver going for nothing. <laughs> um, but, you know, that, that, that back then there was not really anything or anyone that could help you, like, understand what a career in kiting means, you know? What do you need to do to win competitions? What, um, what does it take to make a living out of kiting? And, you know, over the years I've gained a lot of knowledge and now I have the opportunity with Reden to you know, start a Grom team and, and share my knowledge. And uh, and it's, you know, we've been doing it for a, year, a little over a year now and it's it's been super cool, you know. We've got a really cool and talented Grom team. How many, um, how many Groms have you? I think we've got around 20, 20, uh, we're, yeah, wow. uh, we're adding more. So I think we're almost up to 25 now. And, you know, we're doing live streams and we're getting them together to, to, to share, uh, you know, to share my knowledge and, uh, and, and, you know, hopefully, you know, help them a little bit in, in uh, becoming, hopefully, potentially the best kiter in the world. You know, there's, there's tons of opportunities if you're 12, 13, 14 years old. Um, it's just how much you want it. And, uh, yeah, we're giving that opportunity with the Grom team. It looks so good, man, to see you giving back and the, the smiles on the Grom's face as they get to meet Kevin Langeray and get some gear, <laughs> man. It's like a dream. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like you say, it's maybe not always about being the best kite surfer in the world because yeah is pro kite surfing even the job nowadays it's maybe for a handful of people but it is a very tough business uh, case i guess <laughs> yeah well it's you know i think uh, there's not a lot of people that have had a career as long as you and i and maybe aaron mm -hmm. um that you know still make money out of kiting uh we're definitely not millionaires <laughs> We're definitely millionaires in... in, in you invested in, it. In, yeah. <laughs> I spend it. <laughs> no, I think, uh, you know, we're definitely millionaires in cool opportunities we had and cool moments we had. Um, but, you know, it, it, it becomes... It's not easy, but nothing is easy in life. But, you know, in the end, it's, it's the most important how much you really want something. And if you truly want to become a professional kiteboarder and make a living out of it, you gotta you gotta go for it and you gotta set certain goals for yourself but that's with anything in life you know you can if you want to become the best singer in the world or dj in the world uh you gotta commit and um but mostly it's about the lifestyle and the passion you have for it right and there's so many ways to make money with kiting and to keep living this lifestyle and I think yeah it's, you don't have to necessarily be the best but just enjoy it the most yeah and do what you love you can teach kiting you can photograph it you can coach people you can uh, compete yeah, you compete. can uh, start a brand or you can start a business yeah there's there's tons of opportunities like also looking at uh, you you know like you did we did the same thing but you did it in a different way than I did it exactly. and now looking 20 years 25 years down the line we we're still here you know and you did it you know in a, in a way I would have never done it mm -hmm. and I did it in a way you've never done it so but we're still will, here. Everybody will find a way that suits their personality. Ex exactly. You know, where the heart goes out. To. Yeah, and that's... Follow uh, your heart. Follow your heart, exactly. Life lesson <laughs> from this guy. And... Uh, Beautiful. Okay, yeah, and where do you see the sport go, bro? Because... Uh, Up. Yeah. <laughs> Up. <laughs> that's for sure. I can't wait. Is it windy yet? <laughs> bigger, 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 bigger. No, because now with the Red Bull King of the Air, um, yeah, you see the guys taking small guys going absolutely huge, combining many tricks in once. I, as a live commentary dude, cannot even follow sometimes. Um, but it's a nice progression that the sport is going through. What would you like to see in competitions? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I, I, I definitely like that there's a whole new generation coming, you know? I think uh, it, it's good for the sport, it's good for us. You know, like good for myself speaking, uh, I've competed for more than 20 years. Uh, now that new generation is there and I'm okay with it. I think if this was <laughs> five or 10 years prior, I would have uh, thought a little bit different, but no, it's okay. You know that the new generation is there and where I see the sport go is, I do like those, I do like when someone goes really big. I debate sometimes with those triple kite loops. It's like, we're getting to a point where it's like spin it to win it. I'd rather see someone rotate a little bit less, but just go absolutely insanely high and with the kite much lower and, and styling it out. 
um, because otherwise it does become very complex. You know, some kite loops, triple kite loops I'm seeing, it, they don't even it's, come it, yeah, it's like, fuck, and then the kite goes up and they do another one, the kite goes up and it, yeah. It's a start, if, guys, but. <laughs> it's a start, but you guys are gonna push it. Now, I, don't get me wrong, I, I do love the progression uh, and, and, and I'm sure some of the guys that are talented enough to, to, to make it look even better. Nice. So that's, yeah, I see the sport, yeah, keep evolving. It, it is definitely still growing. Also, you know, more people are getting involved. Um, if you look here in Cape Town, 10 years ago, there were definitely not as many people as there are today. Uh, on a windy day, you have to go around five or six people in one jump. And put on your helmet to yeah. about two people. <laughs> and, uh, and that's good for the industry, you know? I think as long as we can grow that industry, that means that for riders, there is gonna be more budget. There's more people, even local people here are, are benefiting from uh, the industry growing, you know? People are- Tourism. Yeah, the tourism, and then we have you know, uh, filmers and photographers, pro riders, all these people being involved, people that are working for the brands, um, you know, so, yeah. you know, eventually when it grows, more people can, you know, work in that industry and, 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 and enjoy, uh, yeah, and enjoy the lifestyle. Yeah, lovely, that sounds good. Yeah, I mean, I love the, where the Red Bull Megaloop is going. Uh, it's uh, the riders' own interpretation of what is extreme in the yeah. moment. And it can be a short line loop, it can be an S loop, it can be a triple loop, as long as it's extreme in the moment. Yeah. I'm so looking forward to uh, to that storm coming to the Netherlands. <sighs> Hopefully, it's not going to take a few years before it. Uh, but I'm sure. I but uh, it's, it's it's, I feel it too, man. It's going to be epic. And um, yeah, I think last but not least, uh, yeah, what is your uh, last advice in life for the people at home? My last advice. Well, I think I said it before. I just yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it sounds silly, but just <laughs> do something you love doing. <laughs> because you become good at it. Yeah. And, uh, and then it, 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 it will come uh, naturally. Nice. And, uh, and of course you'll have hurdles and uh, sometimes someone kicks you down, just get back on your feet and, and keep, uh, and don't let anyone uh, decide what you need to do, decide it yourself. That's yeah. good, wise words. Thanks so much, brother. Yes. Love it, man. <laughs> Fuck, I'm sweaty as, look at that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you might be cold over there, but it's very hot over here. <laughs> Thanks for checking, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Much love. See you on the water.